Hey, what is up? Dr. Mark Trebeskov here, the mad scientist of Mieta. Today, I want to focus on one common issue that I've actually discovered to be a 90% present problem in the majority of the demo recordings that you sent to me. And that one issue during your recording process prevents you from hearing enough detail, therefore your decision-making suffers. Now, this is applicable during any demoing or recording process. Let's check it out. So let's consider a scenario. You are starting to lay down some guitar tracks, be it a demo or be it your final recording. Got a project here and we start obviously by recording guitars into something. Common case, you got some program drums going. Something like that. Cool. Nothing wrong with that. Modern sound, you're good to go. You start adding your guitar tracks. Thing is now, you cannot hear that guitar very well underneath the drums. So what is your instinct? Indeed, increase the level of that guitar. Right. See where I'm getting? You are starting to clip your output fader. Now that's all that I'm talking about. What happens then? All of our modern digital interfaces are designed the way that clipping does not damage them anymore. It's fine. Back in the day it wasn't fine, but these days, with the technology, we're good to go. Problem is, however, by squishing the dynamic range over zero, you are losing information in real time during your monitoring stage. You're not losing the recorded information. Monitoring information, however, is distorted. You end up with a muffled sound, as well as with the sound that lacks dynamic range and breath. The more you clip, the worse it gets. Now I'll show you an example where we compare a clipped file to an unclipped file with balanced level. I will A, B this and show this to you with them being level matched so that there's no difference in volume and the only difference that you hear is in tone and perception of this. This is scientific man playing the incorrectly staged version first, the clipped one. <laughs> And now the unclipped one. <laughs> to me, the difference is pretty much day and night. The clipped version has muddy guitar, uh, drums that lose punch and transients and just overall sound that is just wrong, playing wrong, man. Whereas the unclipped version sounds balanced, has the presence and clarity that is so, so, so important during the tracking stage. Without this clarity, you are playing a guessing game and you're just trying to guess whether your guitars are tight and whether your drums are well performed as well. Let me play it again for you. And now I will alternate between the two, playing unclipped and then clipped. Yep. Very, very 
very significant difference to me. It's just the clip version just doesn't sound right. It lacks uh, the attack, the presence, and the clarity and is plain muddy. So if you want to avoid muddiness, here is the recipe for you to follow. And this is really simple. But, as I mentioned before, for some reason, this is getting forbidden and ignored by 90% of musicians. So check this out and do not do this mistake anymore. In order to get your levels correctly, you have to perform the gain staging procedure before committing to recording. And this is rather simple, although not immediately obvious. So we'll go into this project one more time. This is obviously independent of what uh, audio workstation you're using. May it be Logic, Reaper, Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, whatever it is. But there is a bit of a difference. Each of those programs have their own uh, level metering and different gain scales. So you have to know which one you're using. However, there is nothing over the top complex about it. In Logic, I'm using the level meter plugin in which you can set to meter for peaks and RMS, which is root mean square value, which is uh, essentially an average value across a certain uh, time frame. And now if we play the mix, now if I Play the mix without those boosts that I've introduced. You can see that my levels sit around negative 22 in RMS and around negative 7.5, negative 8 at peaks. Now, there is a bit of a golden sort of rule here, and this is your... RMS should not exceed negative 18 decibels full scale, considering you're working at 24-bit, at least, hopefully you are. And your peaks should not also exceed negative 3. If they do, you are close to 0, and 0 exceeding 0 means you are clipping, and what happens with clipping has been demonstrated before. So you don't want that. This loses your information in real time and clarity. Now, I like to leave a bit of a room as well by leaving my root mean square value slightly lower than negative 18. Negative 18 is your kind of top. I like to keep it at negative 20, maybe even negative 22, because if you consider this, for your initial recording process, these values may be fine, but then you start to add the elements. At the very least, you want your click to be present. And now you have the second guitar going as well. And all of a sudden, my values have increased right to the top where they are. So my peaks are negative 3 and RMS is almost negative 18. So this is the headroom that I'm pushing to. So I only leave 3 decibels of room for myself. Therefore, if you are tracking and if you plan to add up elements to stack the bass and extra guitars and click and stuff like that on top, it makes some sense to keep those values somewhat lower. So maybe aim for negative 20, negative 22, and you'll be fine. That's really about it. Don't need to overcomplicate this stuff, man. As I mentioned before, different uh, doors, different uh, audio workstations have different gain scales. How different are they? If we take a look at this graph here, we are operating at 24-bit uh, digital scale, decibels full scale, and our reference level, which is zero here, is indeed relevant to negative 18. If we are working at SMPT scale, then our negative 18 turn into negative 20, which is kind of close, so don't need to worry about this too much. Now, we're not operating at 16-bit, which is great. And then if we are operating at analog levels, so any analog gear, 
uh, our zero is zero, so we cannot exceed that, really. At the end of the day, I don't want you to overthink this and overcomplicate that. All you need to do is aim for a healthy root mean square level. Figure out a way to check RMS in your door and aim for no more than negative 18. If you want to be safe, negative 20, negative 22. Make sure that your peaks sit at negative uh, 6 to negative 3 and you'll be good to record and you won't ever lose information and you will retain clarity, retain all that you need to come up with some killer takes. If you got any questions, because this is a somewhat advanced topic, please leave a comment and I will definitely attend to it ASAP. Thanks for watching, cheers and happy recordings.